Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice that the Lord has kept us from sundown to sun up. And here we are for a new day to worship God. Worship God for all that God has done for us. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to be ministered to by the Levites. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands and worship God this morning. Wonderful is His name. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same and wonderful is your name. For the rest of my life 
God, in this season of Lent, we are reminded of our own difficulties and struggles. Sometimes the way has seemed too dark. Sometimes we feel like our lives have been marked by such grief and pain. We don't know how our circumstances can ever change. But in the midst of our weakness, we ask, Father, that you would give us renewed strength. Rise up within us and let your spirit shine out of every broken place and wilderness we've walked through. Allow your power to be manifest through our own weakness so that others will recognize it is you who is at work on our behalf. We ask that you would trade the ashes of our lives for the beauty of your presence. Trade our mourning and grief for the oil of joy and gladness of your spirit. Trade our despair for hope and praise. We choose to give you thanks today and believe that this season of darkness with rampant crime and violence, sickness and death will fade away. We thank you that you are with us in whatever we face and that you are greater than any trial. We know and recognize that you're sovereign and we thank you for the victory that is ours because of Christ Jesus. And we are confident that you have good still in store for us in our future. You will be with us. We thank you that you are at work right now trading our ashes for greater beauty. We praise you, for you make all things new. During this season, we often fast. We fast and pray, and often we are denying ourselves certain things for the body but let us also fast in the spirit. Fast from judging others. Feast on Christ dwelling in them. Fast from fear or illness. Feast on the healing power of God. Fast from words that pollute and feast on speech that purifies. Fast from discontent but feast on gratitude. Fast from anger, but feast on patience. Fast from pessimism, but feast on hope. Fast from negatives, but feast on encouragement. Fast from bitterness, but feast on forgiveness. Fast from self-concern, but feast on compassion. Fast from suspicion, but feast on your truth. Fast from gossip, but feast on purposeful silence. Fast from problems that overwhelm, but feast on prayer that sustains. Fast from anxiety, but feast on faith and your love. We, your children, have received the blessed ashes from your anointed manservant, Pastor Ron. May the ashes ignite us to a new light, a flame, a torch, so that we may become more tuned to your voice in our midst so that we commit ourselves to continual and fervent prayer and service 
as we build new relationships in our beloved community known as Gethsemane. Dear Lord, be with us, guide us, and sustain us, and look with favor upon this body of Christ, our household of faith known as Gethsemane, that our ministry may grow and multiply. Renew us, restore us, revive us during this season of Lent. Almighty God, we ask that all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and amen. Our scripture today is taken from 1 Corinthians verse, chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but I don't have love, I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand over my body to feel good about what I've done, but I don't have love, I receive no benefit whatsoever. Love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't seek its own advantage. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustice, but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trust in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will be brought to an end. As for tongues, they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. We know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. What I, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, reason like a child, think like a child. But now that I have become a man, I put an end to childish things. Now we see a reflection in the mirror then we will see face to face. Now I know partially, but then I will know completely in the same way that I have been completely known. Now faith, hope, and love remain. These three things, and the greatest of these, is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Would you please join me in the affirmation of faith? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. As we affirm our faith together, each time you hear the family response, repeat back the response that is given to you. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. The family responds, we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Let the family respond, we believe. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Let the family respond, we believe. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let the family respond, we believe, amen. Amen, everyone. Go in peace. Grace and peace, everyone. Grace and peace. And we thank God for each and every one of you being with us today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for God is good and God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed say, give thanks to the Lord for God is good and God's mercy endures forever. We thank God for another day that God has allowed us this first Sunday in the month of March, this first Sunday in the season of Lent. And we thank God for sparing our lives another year and another another time and another week, another day, another moment. We give God praise today. Uh, we want to invite you, we want to invite you and we want to remind you to worship with us each Sunday at 10 a.m. Each Sunday at 10 a.m. right now, we're still virtual. We will be coming back together again in in-person worship this month, this month. So keep a, a listen out for when, we're, when we will be coming back. Uh, but uh, we right now, we are in person, 10 a.m. You can catch us on Zoom, Facebook Live, and on YouTube. We have begun a Lenten study. Our first Bible study on Wednesday evenings will begin this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We will be teaching over the next couple of weeks on the Lord's Prayer. And so we invite you to join myself. I will be teaching along with our minister, Fred Blair, who will be partnering with me to teach that particular, uh, that particular series. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. It will be on Zoom. You can get that information off of our, e off of our website site and on Facebook we will be there so please join us for that particular time of study and fellowship. Um, we invite you to also keep an eye out on our website. Our website is GethsemaneUMC.org for more announcements. We, had, we invite you to join in with us, whether you're right here in the uh, Maryland, uh, District of Columbia, or Virginia area, or you're across the country or around the world, there are ways that you can connect with us, so we invite you to do so. God bless you is our prayer in Jesus' name. And friends, it's giving time. It is giving time in this house. Come on and give God praise. Put a smile on your face. Hallelujah. Because God loves a cheerful giver. It's a blessing to be able to give. And so we believe in giving God's tithe and our offering unto God. And so I invite you to get your gift ready now. You can get your device out or you can um, or you can uh, you can get your checkbook out. However way you want to do it. If you can give one of three ways. You can mail your check in to 910 Addison Road, Capitol Heights, Maryland, 2 or you can uh, go online to GethsemaneUMC.org and uh, click the Give Online button. The third way you can give is through text, and that information is in front of you right now. We want to remind you, we want to remind you of the promise that Jesus gave. Give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over, shall individuals give back to you. God will cause people to bless you because of your generosity. And when you give, when you you are generous and you are making room for God to bless you over and abundantly. So we thank God and we agree with you now that God is opening up the windows of heaven, pouring out blessings that you may not have room enough to receive. We agree with you now. You are delightsome and a wholesome land unto God. We agree with you now that the Lord is prospering your hand, prospering the things that you set your hand to do, set your mind to do. We agree with you now that you are blessed in Jesus name. Can you declare I am blessed? Uh-huh. Say it one more time I am blessed to be a blessing hallelujah why don't you go all over this virtual sanctuary in your homes wherever you are give God praise give God praise for your for your generosity give God praise because you're making room for God to give you more give God praise for just being able to be a blessing hallelujah to God friends we're praying today we're praying for you you and you we're remembering the uh, we're remembering the family of our sister Eliza Gibson we're remembering the families of so many individuals who have uh, connected to us uh, in one way or another in Bible studies or in worship, a part of the Gethsemane family, um, and they have expressed that they have had transition in their families, all kinds of all kinds of needs that we have today. We're praying for individuals who are ill, who are recovering from illnesses. We are praying for, for individuals who have chronic
chronic illnesses. We're praying for individuals who may have illnesses in their mind in Ill, or who may be broken in spirit. We're praying for those who are su- shut in. We're praying for those who are, uh, who are enduring a, a issues that, uh, that are unspeakable. We're praying for those who are uh, shut behind prison walls. Friends, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. Even right now, I invite you to close your eyes in this moment, in this space, in this space. I invite you to close your eyes and let your faith go up to God. As your faith is going up, open up your mouth and speak those names unto God. Speak those names that your people that are on your mind, people that you are concerned about, people that you have uh, in your family, people that are in your community. Lift up. We're lifting up our world situation. We're praying for peace in Ukraine. We're praying for peace around the world. We're praying for peace in places that we don't know our hot spots at this time. We're praying for our country. We're praying for the leader of our country. We're praying now. We're praying. We're praying for those who are sick in body, sick in spirit, sick in mind. We're praying for you. We're lifting you up to God even right now. The scripture says casting all of our cares upon him because God cares for you. Friends, God cares for you. Go ahead and drop your cares. Drop your issues. Drop your burdens before the Lord right now. God is here right now. God is listening to you. God hears you. God is near unto his people and to God's people. And so we're dropping our issues. And we believe God to hear you. We believe God to answer you. We believe God to supply your every need in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 And we thank God. We thank God for hearing us. We thank God for supplying. We thank God for being a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Come on and out of you, out of faith, give God praise. From the place of faith, give God praise. Thank God for hearing you. Thank God it's already done. He's heard you and it's already done. Hallelujah. Now receive from God right now. Receive God's love. Receive God's peace. Receive the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, receive that even right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. It is so. Amen. And thank God. Now, friends, come on, declare it. Come on, declare I am healed. Come on, come on, declare I am delivered. Come on, declare it. I am set free. Come on, now declare it for your family. My family is healed. My community is healed. My family is delivered. My family is set free. Hallelujah. You believe that? Do you believe that today? Well, come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. If you believe it, tell God thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Hallelujah to God. And by your faith and the word of your mouth, be it unto you in Jesus' name. Woo, yes, God, I thank him. I thank him. I sense God lifting burdens here. I sense God lifting burdens. I sense the joy of the Lord filling your space. I sense it even now for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. Well, it's the first Sunday in the month, and it we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. And birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> yes. And so if you have a March birthday, I want you to do this. Put it in the chat right now. If you're on Zoom, put it in the Zoom chat. If you're on Facebook, put it on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, put it on YouTube. We want to celebrate with you. And I know there's a whole bunch of birthdays this month. And so we want to celebrate you on your birthday this month. I don't have you in front of me and I don't have the list in front of me. But I know that there are some important people who have birthdays this month. And that important person is you if you have a birthday this month. Listen, friends, we're marching on to June. But right now we're celebrating March, all right? We're celebrating March. All right. So if you have a birthday, we want to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And so let us sing happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, everybody. Enjoy life. Enjoy, enjoy, uh, enjoy yourself all month long. Just celebrate all month long. Praise the Lord. I'm struggling this morning. I'm struggling to stay down in a comfortable key. That's what I'm, that's what you see. I'm struggling. I, I want to go up into the rafters, but thank God for our minister of worship and arts who's keeping me in the right key. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for your pastor. Well, we're celebrating anniversaries. Who's got an anniversary? I know that there's some important couples who are celebrating anniversaries. So do this. Put your anniversary in the Facebook chat, in the Zoom chat, and in the YouTube chat. Go ahead and put that. We want to celebrate with you. Um, I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. And so... We want to we say happy anniversary to all those who are celebrating anniversaries in the month of March. Listen, friend, we sing this monthly. Raphael Sadiq wrote a song, and Tony, Tony, Tony sang it. I'm going to sing it for you today just in a second. Do you know what today is? It's your anniversary. Anniversary. Do you know what today is? your anniversary, anniversary, happy anniversary everybody, enjoy love, enjoy life, enjoy it all month long, be blessed abundantly. Friends, uh, March is Women's History Month and around Gethsemane it is Women's Season, we are emphasizing women all month long, at the end of the month will be our Women's Day, however throughout the month we will hear from proclaimers of the gospel who are women who are part of the ministerial team, and so we thank God for our first proclaimer this of the month is Minister Tammy Edmonds, Minister Tammy Edmonds is the lay leader at Gethsemane she has been a lifelong member of Gethsemane and what was richly Zion United Methodist Church. Um, she is also uh, active in a number of uh, a number of ministries here at Gethsemane. She is the wife of our brother Leon Edmonds. She is the mother of four, and she is the grandmother of five. That's two and a bonus three. So we thank God for her, and she loves her family. She loves God. She loves God's people. She is a newly certified lay minister, and she has a word in her mouth, and she has anointing. On her life. I invite you to open up the door of your spirit. I invite you to hear what God is saying to us through God's woman servant, Minister Tammy Edmonds. Let us receive her after the ministry of the Levites. cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord the Lord which made heaven and earth he said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved or the keepeth thee not slumber nor sleep for the Lord is thy keeper the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand upon thy right hand and no the moon by night he shall preserve thy soul even forevermore oh, my help my help 
mine eyes to the hills, from cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, he will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord that keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade. Upon thy right hand, upon No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore.
church family on this first Sunday of Lent and our first Sunday of Women's History Month, the month of March. Our Sunday, the, our Lenten season is where we'll spend time fasting and remembering Jesus and his 40 days in the wilderness and leading up to Resurrection Sunday. And in our Women's History Month this month, we'll continue to celebrate women that have made an impact in our lives, and that has to be many because we all had mothers. Amen? Amen? Amen. It is truly a blessing to stand at this sacred desk to deliver this message this morning, and I thank Pastor Ron for the opportunity. I prayed and pondered over this message for several weeks. I've known this since December that this was my Sunday. I prayed. It seemed like every Sentence I heard somebody sing, every scripture I wrote, I read, I could make, seems like I could have made a sermon of it, but I know that wasn't the case. So I praise the boy and thank God he gave me a word last week. And I tell you, I just sat down at the computer and the words start flowing. And it was such a blessing. Thank you, God, for allowing me to mention your word to your people today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please pray me through this message. I don't take this assignment lightly because in many places, people are jailed or even killed for worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a sad thing that must be. It's not a, a position that's taken lightly. So I'm eternally grateful. May we all go into the posture of prayer. Dear Lord, you promised us that where two or three are gathered, you will be in the midst. Lord, we welcome you among us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask you to open our ears, God, that we may hear your voice. Open our minds, God, that we may re receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits, God, so that we may receive and spread your wonderful love to all humanity. We ask all of these in your glorious son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pray with me now. Don't forget, pray with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our scripture lesson, as Pastor Ron would say, has been so eloquently read by our sister Dorothy Stubbs in this 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. 1 Corinthians 13 is known as the poem of love. This book explains to us how we are called without exception to love. To love. This book is written by the Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth and Christians everywhere. That means all of us as well. The purpose of this book, 1 Corinthians, is to teach believers how to live for Christ in a corrupt society. These things we are witnessing right now. Wars, senseless acts of violence, diseases, and the list could go on and on. If you turn on a television, a radio station, pick up a newspaper, hit the internet button, you'll see all of these things all the time. And it's very unfortunate. We're living in some perilous times, Christians. Everyone must stay prayed up. Everyone must know God for who he is. The two scriptures I will highlight from 
the first, cha first Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verses 7 and verse 13. Verse 7 read, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Not some circumstances, every circumstance. It always is hopeful. It never gives up. This scripture explains the more it, it explains the more we become like Christ, the more love we will show to others. It, we got to put the work in. We got to put the work in to be more like Christ. And verse 13 says, three things will forever will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest the greatest, the everlasting, the always, love is the greatest. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this, this uh, verse tells us faith is the foundation and content of God's message. Hope is the attitude and focus. Love is the action. We got to put the work in. When faith, hope, and love are all in a line, we are free to love completely as God showed us his love. We got to show God's love. It's not about us. This is about God. The subject of the message today, if you haven't guessed it already, is love is the greatest. Amen. Love, love, love. That word means so many so many, so much to so many. People have all types of reasons why, to, why they love someone. They love providers. They love healers. They love music. They love cars. Love, love, love. We love, we throw the word around as though it's five cents. I'm not going to say a dollar. Five cents. <laughs> Them dollars mean something today. Amen. The price of gas is going up. We need them dollars. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> As I was preparing my message for today, I was reminded that there are eight types of love. I'm going to give you the English word to each of those loves. They're typically in Greek, but I'm going to give you the English version. The Greek let words are a little bit hard to pronounce. Amen. So I won't even try. So the first and the greatest of the love is, I'll do this one, agape love, unconditional love, unconditional love, because we all know who has the, gave the agape love, right? And ag unconditional love is the highest level of love to offer. It's spreading love in any circumstance, including destructive circumstances. Like Jesus dying on the cross, unconditional love. Like loving that neighbor who turned their back on you, unconditional love. Like loving that child who wouldn't listen to you when you were trying to tell them the right thing to do, unconditional love. We must show unconditional love. There's also romantic love that comes from a natural instinct from, from most people when it comes to a romantic behavior. Affectionate love. This occurs between family and friends that share the same values and respect for each other, also known as brotherly love. Self-love, which we most of the time are always lacking in, taking care of oneself. We must be able to take time to take care of ourselves, know our self-worth, and not ignore our personal needs. Familiar love, the love between a parent and a child. Ooh, there's not a greater love, I tell you. Every time I look at mine, and he's 37, Jesus. That parent and child love, and the love of a best friend, someone you meet that's like family, because sometimes our fam friends are just like family, amen? That's a deep e emotional condition. Enduring love is the number six. It is the love between a couple that chooses to put equal efforts 
and to their relationship that matures over many years. You learn to love people. You learn to love things. So that's enduring love. Playful love. We see little kids running around the play playground and they just love each other, laughing and giggling at a little nothing just because they're running and playing. That's the playful love. That also happens for adults sometimes, too. It's called the honeymoon period of your relationship. <laughs> Obsessive love. Most of us probably know someone that endures this type of love, and because it's not so good, unfortunately, we hear domestic violence, um, killings, and all kinds of things going on. Unfortunately, obsessive love does that to our society. Those were the eight types of love. But the love that I'll focus on today is agape love, the unconditional love. We as Christians believe God showed unconditional love to all mankind by sacrificing his son, Jesus Christ, for our sins. For that, we should say hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, because if it wasn't for that, we don't know where we would be today. We think we're reading some bad stuff. Oh, yeah, it could be a whole lot worse. Amen? Amen. We should share the love of Jesus to everyone to ensure others learn to love one another. Love should be spread it to people and we see and meet every day. We don't have to be mean. We don't have to be nasty. Love. We can, be, we can show love, respect. Love, respect. Amen. As I always say, we are the only Bible some people read. So if you're not showing love, unconditional love, to fe your fellow mankind, they could be reading a, a whole nother story about love. Unfortunately, in the wor world today, we don't sp spread love as much as we should. Witnessed by the violence and the hatred that we read and hear across the world. Many years ago, there was a group called Take Six, and they had a song that went something like this, and I'm not going to sing. <laughs> if, we ne if we ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. We need him now, and it goes on to say, we need him every day and every hour. We need God. We need God's love. Recognize we need God's love. This isn't about me. It isn't about you. This is about showing God's love to God's people. I know I'm a witness to that. I'm sure you are as well. I've shared, had love shared to me in so many ways, and I've tried to give it right back to everyone that I see and know. We must, we must always remember we belong to God. God is love. Our world today is experiencing things that most of us couldn't have even imagined. Today or years, day, years and days before, due to COVID, the COVID virus, at one point it felt like our world had just stopped dead in its tracks. Airplanes stopped flying. Trains stopped moving, buses stopped, business, everything was shutting down because no one knew what was going to happen or how this disease was going to affect us as individuals, how it was going to affect our kids, how it was going to affect the people that, that we love and care for it with other health conditions. We had no idea. And the information that was coming out from the news media, it was not good. No, Folks were dying by the numbers that we couldn't even imagine in days and weeks and months. We couldn't find any Lysol. We couldn't find any toilet paper. We couldn't find any paper towels. It was a crazy time. It's been two years already. Two years. Offices have been shut down. The fe I worked in the federal government 37 and a half years, retired in 2018. I would have never in my wildest imagination thought that the government employees would not have been in their building for two years. When they first started telework, it was hard for us to even get 
our managers and leaders to allow us to telework. Now everybody had to telework. We're talking about thousands and millions of people around the United States and around the world. This just didn't infect the United States. Around the world, where folks were just quarantined in their homes. It was a crazy time. It still is a crazy time. It is a crazy time, no matter what our government is saying. I tell you, it's, it's been rough. It's been a rough two years. We've all known someone or someone in our family that has perished because of COVID. We're, we're praying for one another, but we're still sharing that love of God to each and every one. Our, war, our world today is experiencing wars and rumors of wars. We continue to pray for Russia and Ukraine. It's just a sad day. People are suffering and losing their lives because of lack of love. Love, if I tell you, who, if you love everyone like Jesus loved us, who would you hurt? You would never want to hurt anybody, more or less kill someone, right? The Bible tells us that nations would rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. However, in the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus reminds us that he is the Christ, and many will deceive us, like they're trying to do right now. We will hear of these wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that we as Christians, as lovers of Christ, are not alarmed. We must remember God is still in control, and God is love. Trust me, it's easy we know the Bible talks of, talks of God handing you over to a reprobate mind. No one wants to experience that because that's what some of our folks in society are doing right now. Living in that reprobate mind, murdering people, senselessly killing people, women and men and kids, shooting it. It's just so sad of what we're dealing with today. But we have to remember, we as Christians... We're peculiar people. We have to set ourselves apart. We can't act like the world. We must continue to show God's love. And for that, we give thanks. Spread Jesus' joy and Christian love and know that our reward is being stored up in heaven. Amen. On that great getting up morning. On that great, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're striving for. That love that we shed will get us there. We must start feuding, stop feuding in our lives and not showing love to one another. That's not what God wants for his children. God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 tells us, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Amen? Because God is love. I'm not making this up. It's in the book. Take your time to read it. Amen? It's in the book. This isn't nothing made up by Tammy Edmonds. God is love. Unfortunately, we, are, we have so many evil people in the world today. Sometimes when we go to talk to our friends and family members, you know, we'll at, try to stir them in the right direction. And we'll come to them and, you know, we'll see them doing wrong and try to correct them. And, of course, they always come back to us. Remember, you used to do. Yep, we used to do that. Thank God for repentance. You had sense enough to ask God to forgive you for your wrongdoing. And what you're showing them is love. They may not always get it right away, but keep showing that same love. That love makes sense. Amen? So in the book, uh, in the book of Ephesians 4.2, it tells us, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Also, in 1 Peter 4, 8, it tells us, Above all, love each other deeply, because love 
covers a multitude of sins. I could shout right here because Lord knows that nobody's perfect but Jesus. So we all come short of the glory of God, right? So thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for covering my multitude of sins. The sins that I've made and the sins that I have yet to make. God, Jesus is just is covering those for us because we're continuing to try to show love to one another. Lastly, in John 15, verses 12 through 13, it tells us, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I, as I have loved you. We hear Pastor Ron quote that after a lot of our meetings. Amen. There's no greater love than one who has given his life, yes. laid down his life for his friend. Yes. And in verse 17 of John 15, it goes on to say, this is my commandment. Love each other. Love. The four-letter word, L-O-V-E, it just goes out the window the minute someone doesn't do what you want them to do or the way you want them to do it. We have to remember God is love. Keep looking for the love in every, don't see the glass half empty, see it half full. That's the love. That's the love. Don't see someone doing wrong. See someone that's trying to get it right and help them along the way. That's showing love. Showing love. It's important. It's important that we continue to show love. We know the, we know the devil is busy, though. We definitely know the devil's busy. That's why we got to stand on God's promises. Who Jesus, I can't tell you how the devil is busy throughout this land. We got to continue to stand on God's promises. In closing, my one and only point that I want to make to this morning to my family, my friends, my church family, and everyone in our virtual sanctuary is show unconditional love. Christian love so others that uh, so so others may see the God in you. If they don't see the God in you, they're not going to want to follow that God. So please show the God in you. And my closing prayer is, Lord, we thank you because it is through your word that we have found the freedom that we've been yearning for. As we prepare to close this worship service today, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to continue to show us your unconditional love and give us the, give us the know-how to rise above who we are and show the same unconditional love to one another. In Jesus' precious and matchless name we pray, amen. Thank you once again, Pastor Ron and my church family for always supporting me. Amen. Thank you. How many of you thank God for God's love? How many of you thank God for God's love? Love is the greatest. Love is the greatest. God's unconditional love. We thank God for loving us so much that God sent God's only begotten son. That whosoever believes on God should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. And thank God for Jesus' Jesus showing us uh, what unconditional love looks like. The Bible says that when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Aren't you glad that? Aren't you glad about it? You weren't when you weren't thinking about God. God was had you on God's mind. Hallelujah! Why don't you give God praise today? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank God for God's love. Thank God for God's love. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <clears throat> Hallelujah! And as we slur, slowly emerge. From being quarantined, we realize that um, some of us are fully um, fully mobile. Others of us are beginning to re-engage in outside activities, and still others are at home. You've been out, you've gone back in. Whatever the case may be, um, we are all called to God's table of love and grace. And so now we share in the great thanksgiving. Each time you hear the family respond, you will repeat back the response that will be given to you. Are you ready? 
All right, here we go. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. Let the family say, we lift them up to God. You say that. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it's the right thing to do, not only now but always, day after day after day. Let the family say, day after day after day. You say that. Day after day after day. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us a breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. We, when rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up an ark on the water, saved Noah and his family, and made the covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people from Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us the commandment made to, uh, made to your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might. The family says, holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. The family says, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. The family says, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper is over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Let the family say Christ has died. Christ has died. Let the family say Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Let the family say Christ will come again. 
Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you. We belong to your body. Let the family declare we belong to your body. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. Let the family say we will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. We will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This is the time when you can get your elements. Uh, If you have not gotten them now, you can get a piece of bread, a cracker, or whatever, and you can get some grape juice if you don't have grape juice, fruit juice of some kind. And I invite you to get them and let us prepare to share in this feast together. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I that you hold in your hand is the body of Christ which was broken for you it was broken for you and it was broken so that you can see what unconditional love looked like so that you can then express that to your to our your brothers and sisters let us now eat this bread that you are holding reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or 
how lonely or how isolated it may become can be filled again. This cup represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed for us. Thank God for the blood. You may drink at this time. And I fall on my knees with my pray that you have been blessed today. I pray that you have been inspired by God's unconditional love. And I pray that you are inspired enough not only to receive, woo, yes, sir. I pray that you are inspired to receive God's love. So right here, right in this place, go ahead and lift your hands and receive God's love. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. God loves you. Woo. Receive God's love. At this time, receive the unconditional love of God. Yes, that is a work of grace. You did not earn it. You did not deserve it. We could not have worked for it. God just loves us. Oh, thank God for God's love. Oh, how God loves you and me. God gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. The love that restores. The love that puts you back together again. The love that keeps you. The love that holds you. The love that comforts you. The love that anchors you. Receive God's love. Yes, the love that wipes away your sin. The love that forgives. Receive God's love love hallelujah hallelujah and in that same way we are empowered to love one another we are empowered to love we are empowered to forgive we are empowered to listen we are empowered to understand we are empowered to have compassion we are empowered to let go of offenses we are empowered to love like God loves us receive God's love and let yourself be a channel through which a conduit through which God's love flows hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how God 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 loves us. Hallelujah. 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 In this Lenten season, as you are preparing to go forward, as you are seeking God in a more earnest way, I invite you, I invite you to be conscious of the love of God that it flows to you continuously. And I invite you to be conscious of how you exhibit that love and how you manifest that love and how you let God's love flow through you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up God's countenance ah. and give you peace. The Lord allow, the Lord help us to be conscious of God's love to us, God's unconditional love, love being the greatest. The Lord let us be conduits of God's love 
in this world today, in our families, in our homes, even to our pets. The Lord, allow us to be conduits of God's love. This is our prayer for you in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be blessed abundantly. Hallelujah.